Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. For today's Rugby Championship Round 1 review. Springboks, Rugby Championship lose, question mark, very much so, in my opinion, after a pretty classy performance against Australia, getting a 33 points to 7 victory. It was an early statement of intent, however, the Rugby Championship itself has been blown right open with the shock loss by the All Blacks to Argentina. 38 points to nil um, over in New Zealand, which is not a result too many people would expect. And now the All Blacks very much need to respond this coming weekend if they are to have any chance in the rugby championship. If they were to go two losses down against Argentina, for example, they'd have to probably go and beat South Africa twice uh, to sort of keep themselves in the running. The box, on the other hand, uh, another big strong win against Australia this weekend would put them... Um, Pretty well ahead, especially if New Zealand were to respond and beat Argentina and then come away from that sort of leg of the rugby championship one apiece. We're going to be looking at the individual games as well as looking at the points table and uh, you know where things lie and what things potentially be looking like in the coming weeks. Before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let's get into it, shall we? And we'll start with the Australia vs. Uh, game. Um, probably a game that probably could have scored more points. Um, could have been a little bit more clinical, but I don't think you want to really, um, you know, start getting too far into it because um, you start sort of nitpicking, really. And uh, the fact of the matter is that South Africa didn't concede a point for 76 minutes, for example, um, and, and scored um, tries throughout the match. So they it, it was a one-sided affair. It was never, ever, ever at risk of a comeback or of losing, for example. They dominated basically from the get-go and one of the most dominant performances we've seen. Um, by South Africa in recent times. And it is a very poor Australian side, but, um, you know, two things can be true at the same time. So you can look at a, a, a Australia and say they were really poor, whilst looking at the Springboks and saying they were really good. Um, so let's look at some of the stats over there. Five tries to one. Um, you look at them, the meters gained, far more from South Africa, more defenders beaten, uh, more carries, more clean breaks, um, past as much of a muchness, but more offloads. Um, the only thing that South Africa might, might want to try and uh, improve is turnovers conceded um, defensively, for example. Pretty solid from the box, but it's just eight, um, um, from both sides, pretty similar. But um, again, the box far more, uh, um, the attacks they missed, far less relevant if you look at the fact that when they eventually conceded, it was down to 30 men, 76 minutes, for example. Um, and, and that was what really needed to happen for Australia to be able to score. Uh, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Uh, because, the, the, you know, we, we see it all the time, don't we? Uh, people complaining about, oh, we always kick the possession and, and team, you know, we can't kick. You know, other teams don't kick. Other teams do kick for a start. And uh, we are seeing a growing trend where the teams that do kick more do tend to actually win the match. Um, it comes down to the execution of, of those kicks, for example, when and where to kick and uh, and how you use that. Um, if we look at the conversions, for example, this is this was the Sash Farmer Gomazulu missing one penalty uh, goal as well as a, a conversion. It was two conversions, I think. Uh, not one conversion. Um, so missed two out of um, I think it was seven kicks in, in total from, from Sasha Farmer Gomazulu. Uh, or two from six, I think it was actually, now that I say that. Um, so uh, if you look at, and then uh, a potential, well, we, we attempt to drop goal. Um, if you look at Rux 1, for example, um, breakdown relatively even, I think. I think that I think the, the, the box breakdown threat was obviously a lot better in the second half when you had a Markham and Star and Malcolm Marks, for example, Quacker Smith, where Malcolm Marks then went into the bin. Uh, but let's look at the set plays. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, the lineouts were really good from a, an, an, an innovation point of view from the box, but need to try and clean up some of the, 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 the ball. But I think this is one of those things that kind of comes with the territory. If you're trying new things, for example, and you're trying different lineouts sort of calls, then um, you know you probably are more likely to to lose more lineups. So that's something that we kind of need to to look at. Um, it's an interesting thing, isn't it, when you look at stats? Because you look at those scrums, for example, and you see a hundred percent one from Australia, one loss from South Africa, and therefore a seventy five percent. But the scrums were so so dominant um, from the Springboks; they absolutely hammered Australia. And uh, discipline wise as well, three cards right towards the end uh, makes it quite quite poor up in the box. But I mean, most of those penalties, as well as the other cards coming in the final ten sort of fifteen minutes, so it didn't really uh, impact them much in the end. But as I said. The overall thing was a pretty dominant uh, victory. Um, if you look at some of the of the of the stats, for example, um, you know your high performance for South Africa from a meters carry, for example, Kirk Lawrence had two tries, 107 meters, clean, and there uh, three clean breaks as well. Let's have a look at uh, something like a Ben Jason Dixon, by the way. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal. 
um, game from him. And uh, I was really, really depressed. We've got to look at the, at the defense, for example, over here. Uh, 19 tackles from him. 13 tackles from Pierre Steph, the toy. By the way, not a single missed tackle from Ben Jason Dixon. So, so really, really good work. Other big performances over there. 12 tackles from Sashvan and Gomazulu. Um, I did miss four. He had a very interesting game with Sashvan and Gomazulu because he had some really great moments and then a couple of, of moments that he wanted to try and clean up. Um, you know, those four missed tackles, um, the, the the two kicks he missed, for example, missed touch twice, but then had some absolutely sublime moments. You know, the carry and the break, that one hundred offload, offload, for example, the fact that he did make 12 tackles. So it was a really, really good game from him. Um, but uh, And there are a couple of work-ons that he'll be very aware of. The nice thing is they're very easy to fix. Uh, if you look at Australia, for example, um, a big shift there from Chris Cazano on, um, on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on defense, also wanting, wanting a turnover there. Um, Harry Wilson was was very was very uh, involved. If you look at his carries, for example, eleven carries making twenty seven meters. Uh, Rob Valentini, can, as as sort of expected, continues to be one of Australia's best players. Um, if you look at his fifteen carries, twenty nine meters made, a defender beats and a clean break, for example, did score a try as well. Um, and then on defence, uh, if we look at him as well, um, twelve tackles, uh, just the one missed tackle, uh, two turnovers, one. So it was a good game um, from. Um, Rob Valentini, but uh, other good players. I thought. I thought you know, if you look at a South African perspective, I thought that uh, uh, Jesse Creel was very, very good once again. Three defenders beaten there, uh, fifty-eight meters across his carries, a try assist as well um, on on defense. Eight tackles made by him, just the two missed. Uh, other good players, other performances. I mean, the front row was fantastic. Malfast, um, Mahova, Bongi Benambi, Oxen Che, all really, really solid. Uh, let's have a look at uh, New Zealand versus Argentina, shall we? And a lot of pressure. Now on on uh, Sir Scott Robertson um, because they, it's a game that they they expect to to win and uh, as you can see did not win so well, Argentina they were absolutely terrific weren't they um, in the second half and uh, really deserved that victory I thought that uh, New Zealand were very lucky not to go down to fourteen men um, that Ethan Black had a tackle for me was was a, was a red card all day long um, but very rarely you see Argentina side outscoring with tries in New Zealand side so three tries to four. Um, but Argentina looked like they're attacking best, and they're such an exciting side. They find space, and you can see that by 397 meters uh, carry um, gain, for example, um, despite fewer carries. 17 defenders beaten, 21 defenders beaten. You can't expect that in these kind of games. They're usually very open. Um, plenty of clean breaks. Lots of turners conceded as well because you, lots, you, know, you often see lots of clean breaks, and then these sort of players get isolated, and they kind of turn it over. Uh, so if you look at defensively, much of much as well. Uh, kicks in play, very similar. As well as conversions, um, you know, Dan McKenzie kicked a bit better, um, but uh, breakdown was 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 also quite interesting because it's a very key part of the game, and um, it was pretty even. So you know, you, you often see when teams win, especially teams that sort of win um, when they might not expect to. You know, they often usually have a very good breakdown game. This one's a bit more even. Uh, similarly, as well, uh, from a set piece point of view, lineouts a little bit shaky. Scrum's pretty solid there. Um, as well, and uh, discipline was pretty similar. So it was quite a similar game in terms of the, the stats and position. The interesting thing is obviously where the game gets played. And you look at over here, majority play between the halfway and the 22. Uh, obviously very much a counter-attacking team when they play against the special teams like the All Blacks. Um, so, uh, but a very important game, uh, I think, now for, for the All Blacks to try and, uh, and to turn things around and try and get that victory. Uh, if you look at some key performers, um, I really thought that Antonio Brown looked pretty solid for a lot of that game. Couple of nice carries there. He scored a good try as well. Uh, Mark Slayer adding his uh, adding to his count over there. Um, on uh, in terms of your your, your big carries, Ali Sevier nineteen carries. You kind of expect that from him these days, don't you? He was capping the side. A couple of players missing for the All Blacks. It'll be interesting to see, for example, if Rico Wani might come back in, and Will Jordan. I think I probably expect to to start next week this coming weekend. Probably in place of Sevier Reese. That would probably keep um, Burton Barrett. But if you look at the Argentinians, um, so, so exciting are the two wings, um, both Moroni and uh, Matteo Carreras. Um, very, very exciting. Uh, Lucio Sinti getting a nice try as well. And, uh, you know, Marcus Kramer, if you go look at the fence, for example, uh, always, always, always has big games when they win these games. So, missed four tackles, but nine tackles made by him. John Martin Gonzalez, 13, and Pablo Mateo with 11. Rubiolo with 18 as well. So, massive defensive shift by a lot of those Argentinian players. Whenever you see Marcus Kramer put in a big shift New Zealand lose <laughs> uh, or rather, rather whenever New Zealand lose to Argentina Mark Schoen has put in a big shift now I said that in my preview he's, he's a player that absolutely loves this sort of games and they've got world class players in their side 
I think Santiago Chukubara is a really good player. I think that back row is as good as any back row in the world. I genuinely do. I think, you know, Pablo Mateo, Marcus Kramer, and John Barton Gonzalez can compete with most uh, loose chairs. I thought they were absolutely uh, superb. So a big, big uh, weekend ahead of them, um, New Zealand, to try and bounce back from that. Because if we look at uh, the standings, this is where we are. Obviously, only just a single game over there, but um, South Africa collecting five points out of a possible five. The big thing for New Zealand, didn't consider it a single point because they weren't even within seven. So five points for South Africa, four points for Archie. And if South Africa were to get a bonus point of victory this weekend, um, and uh, Archie and New Zealand were to, the result would swap, they'd be a minimum of four points ahead with South Africa, which meant that they could actually afford to lose a game against the likes of New Zealand and still go on to win the rugby championship as long as they can sort of continue picking up points throughout the rest of the championship. A plus 26 points difference so far for South Africa, obviously a minus 26 points difference for Australia. Um, what would be very interesting is if Austin were to go beat New Zealand once again this weekend, then all of a sudden the Bredesville Cup, one of the biggest rivalries in world rugby, would basically be a fight for third and fourth place. What did you think of this round? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.